greetings from Guantanamo. Today's episode we have the reveal of my new bike frame, which is this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and those a bit older, please note my time Skylon. This is a 2022 model that I have just purchased. It's the rim brake and it doesn't have the mass damper in the front, so I didn't want to get that, but I bought this. Now, full disclosure, I paid for that frame. <laughs> it's not a freebie, I paid for it. The only thing that I had to do was, getting hold of one was problematic. So I emailed them and they sorted me out. So this frame came directly from time um, in Slovakia. Now this is going to be either a stroke of genius or commercial suicide for time because would they want to be associated with a five-year-old who beholds the utmost in engineering integrity will not tell you that it's the stiffest thing since sliced bread is more aerodynamic than a paper clip or has a bottom bracket stiffness that's harder than some bloke from Pornhub. No, this is going to be the real world review. Now, they, well, it's not really a review. Now, there's a few reasons why I bought this bike. I mean, the main one is the build. So this is made using a process called RTM. So in a lot of uh, bike frame manufacture or even sporting good manufacture, um, they use something called prepreg, which is like cloth with epoxy built in. Um, you heat it up under pressure and then it all sort of goes and melts into one nice uh, composite material. This is different. This one, the weave is separate to the resin. So you can weave whatever fibers you want, high mod, low mod, high strength, Vectran, uh, Kevlar, whatever you want. And then you put it together and then you uh, introduce the resin as a separate product. And that is how this is made. Now, historically, it's only been time that have done this, but of late, 3T have also done this. Now, that is the main reason. The defect rate in this type of manufacture is considerably lower, and therefore, um, I mean, the, the defect rate is the king, because you can have all the high strength that you want, but if you've got a, a defect rate that's high, the local strength will be low. So I bought this frame. I'm not a poser in the sense that I, I'm not going to worry if I get scratches on it, because it needs to be used. But, I mean, the one thing I will say, I didn't buy it for the paintwork. The paint on this is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. So there's the weave straight underneath and it's just gloss on top. It really does look like nothing else. I mean, I didn't buy it for that, but it does look absolutely amazing. Um, so some other features on this bike, the headset is separate to the stem. So this is, um, under compression of his own accord. So you don't need to put the stem on it to put that down. So it isolates that. So you're not going to have uh, an SL7 type um, failure. It's very, very unlikely. The other thing is, and I've measured it, the bottom bracket. Yes, we have a round bottom bracket that's within spec. <laughs> we appreciate a round hole there. Now, if you're going to buy one of these, um, it does come in disc brake rim brake, um, but they're all set up the same way. So you can have uh, DI2 or EPS or even SRAM uh, ETAP, um, but the routing for the mechanical shifting goes through here and in here there is a guide. So the guide is internal. So you've got all of that cable. It doesn't go through along the bottom there. So if you're going to ride through a load of crap, you're not going to be able to see it. That is my serial number, just in case anyone wants to copy it. Everyone will know it's come from here, so that's no good if you're going to do that. Um, right, what else do we get? Let me get the uh, other bits and pieces out. So what else do we get? Well, we've got carbon compression dropouts. That's fairly run-of-the-mill these days. Um, to be honest, I actually prefer aluminium, but you can see the way these are made. It's made in two pieces, so it's an insert that goes from there in, and then it must be bonded or glued in, and it's the same on the other side which is just out of shot. 
Now the earlier Skylons had an integrated seat post, so you would have had to cut it to um, the length that you wanted. The newer ones, and this one included, it's adjustable. Um, now the wattage saving from having an integrated seat post is probably minuscule compared to the pain in the rear end if you try and come to sell it um, without having a, an adjustable seat post. So that is one of the other reasons why I got this particular type. What I've tried to do here is I've just tried to zoom in on the weave because I know some of you get off on that kind of stuff but you can see the weave through the paint um, or the gloss clear coat I mean it really does look good um, not that I care because those kind of people generally have small penises right so this is um, a screenshot of the inside of the frame you can see uh, the rib nuts there they're all nicely rounded top left and now straight in front of you you can see what was basically the only thing that I could find that's worthy of even mentioning and even then I'm scraping the barrel there's some wax left over from the um, molding process um, and as I said that is really scraping the barrel so the white tube is sort of four or five mil thick and uh, the wax is is what was left behind but you can see the frame inside is, is very clean and that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to whack that like button. Please do comment on my frame, because I like looking at it. And as always, keep banging your hairdressers. I know I'll be banging mine.